So um, I'm going to give you an update on the set melanotide trial. Um, and just to give you a quick overview, um, I talked about this at the last conference, um, which was virtual. And uh, some of you will have been there. Some of you might be new to it. So I'm going to do uh, a little bit of a summary of what we talked about last time. So I'll talk about hunger and how that works. Then I'll talk about um, set melanotide and, and how that works in, in people who have BBS. And then I'll give you an update on where we are with clinical trials. And then I'll tell you what we're doing next. Um, but I'm going to start with, with a biology lesson. Okay? So this is a bit about hunger. So how does hunger work? And really, to understand hunger, you need to uh, understand what's going on in the brain. And um, I don't know if this has a pointer, but you can see there's a little, in the middle of this person's brain, I'm showing a picture here, and in the middle, there's a little yellow bit. And that bit is called the hypothalamus. And that part of your brain um, deals with what we call homeostasis. And homeostasis means a balance, basically maintaining a good balance in your body. And your body's always trying to maintain a balance. So whether that's to do with your, uh, with temperature or thirst or weight, there's a sort of a, a balance being maintained. And um, uh, this is this is a, a very complicated slide that gives you an overview of how hunger is maintained in your body. And you don't need to memorize any of it. All I'm trying to show you with the slide is that actually it's really complicated, right? There are lots of different pathways um, and uh, interactions between your brain and the rest of your body and your gut. And, and they're constantly sending signals to each other, telling you, um, telling, telling you how to maintain that balance in your body. And the bit that I want to focus on, I've now highlighted in, in, a, in a green square here. And, um, and you can see I've underlined here. So there are bits, bits, this is in your brain. So there are bits that increase your appetite and bits that decrease your appetite. And they have to be in balance or in homeostasis with each other. And, uh, and I'm now highlighting in a little red circle uh, a bit uh, that, that, um, that doesn't quite work in BBS. And what set melanotide does is it goes in in that particular part of the pathway that doesn't quite work in people with BBS. And it helps with that bit. And it helps you uh, get that balance right between the um, increase in appetite and the decrease in appetite. And for those of you who, um, who were at the virtual conference last year, you will probably remember this slide. So we talked about how um, at St. Thomas's we were taking part in a clinical trial. Uh, and it's a worldwide trial. So there are lots of other centers around the world who are taking part in this. And um, it's what we call a phase three clinical trial. And phase one of a clinical trial is where you're looking at safety of a new drug. Uh, phase two is where you're looking at the safety and getting the dose right for a new drug. And phase three is kind of getting to the end of your clinical trial series. And that's where you're looking at the safety and, and how well the drug works. And this particular trial is a phase three trial. And, um, and, and the first bits of that trial have, have been completed uh, worldwide. And what it showed was that, uh, that overall, people have a, a decrease in weight um, and they have a decrease in hunger and people feel that it improves their quality of life. So these are all good signs. Okay. And in the UK, we had two um, adults who took part in this trial. Doesn't sound like a lot, but actually worldwide, it was uh, the, the numbers were in the 30s. So it's not a, a large number, um, but that's a slightly different thing for, 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 for rare diseases. So you don't need quite the same number of people taking part. Um, so we had two, two, uh, two people taking part, and they had a daily injection of this particular drug. And those trials have now been completed from our point of view. And the next steps are that there are new trials that are due to start. And, um, and we're hoping to start in the beginning of 2023, but that's pending some approvals. And so there's a little bit of uncertainty about exactly when we're going to start. Um, uh, and again, it's going to be a small number of participants. It's not going to be two. It'll be more than that. Um, but we don't quite know how many um, we will have capacity to take on yet. Um, and all four centers are going to be taking part this time. So it's going to be the two centers in Birmingham and the two centers in London. So all of the centers will be taking part. Um, and there are some quite strict criteria for who can take part and who can't take part. Um, but rest assured that um, everybody who's coming to the conferences, we have your, we have your names and your details. Uh, and of course, you're very welcome to tell us if you are specifically interested in taking part. Um, but we will be, we will be contacting people. 
Um, and, and this is going to be a slightly different trial because it's going to be a weekly injection rather than a daily injection. So, so um, and that's because the drug, drug company who've developed this particular drug, so Rhythm, have, um, have developed the drug to a point where they can uh, give people weekly injections rather than daily injections, which I think is a, is a, is a big advantage, actually. Um, and it will be for people who are over the age of six. So that's what we're up to on the trials. And I wanted to, um, to finish this, just a very brief section, but I wanted to finish it uh, just with a note to say that, uh, of course, we are always going to be primarily focused on maintaining weight through uh, a healthy diet and exercise. That goes without saying. That's incredibly important for us in the clinics. Um, and uh, for, but we recognize that that's tricky anyway, and it's particularly tricky if you have BBS. Mm -hmm. um, and so for people who, uh, who need a little bit of extra help. Um, uh, drugs like setmelanotide might be helpful, and there are other drugs that are coming onto the market, and I think some of you have already tried some of those drugs or might be on some of those drugs. So there are new therapies being developed for weight management, um, and I think it's looking, it's looking very positive. Any questions? Normally, there are loads of questions when I do this section. <laughs> I think there's a question at the back there. Hello there. You were saying that people have had the injections. Was that the actual drug or the placebo? Do you know, I'm sorry, I missed the last part. So, so I just heard the part that you said people have had the injections, and I missed the last part yes. of what you said. Was that the actual drug itself, or was it the placebo? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So, um, so uh, in the beginning, there is, a, there is a sort of time period where people have either the placebo or they have the drug, and we're not told, and they're not told what they have. And then there is a point where that stops, and then where they where they have the drug. So both the participants who've taken part have had the drug for a period of time. Thank you. Yeah. And following the completion of the study, what was the effect long term? Has the weight, have the head weight regained, or have they continued? It's a, it's a, so that's a good question. So, um, so for so for so our particip participants have not um, continued with the drug, and that's because that was circumstances really more than anything else. Um, so uh, there was an offer of continuing on a slightly different, in a slightly different trial that that just didn't work um, for them, which is very fair. Um, uh, sorry, there was a second part to your question. Whether, was that whether they had whether they had regained whether weight. they had regained weight? Yeah. yeah. So we've we've only just finished. Okay. Yeah. Hiya. Um, what what is the implication for people in Ireland? Is it being rolled out in Ireland? Yeah. I don't know whether actually our rhythm guys might be able to answer this. So I don't know whether anybody's. I don't think anybody's trialing it out in Ireland at the moment. Reno or Sharon here? They here? Yeah, they're here at the back. Reno wants Reno to say? The back yeah. There. Hi, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Reno Costanza and I work for Rhythm Pharmaceuticals as their medical advisor. Just to answer the previous question, we do have data now up to two years with Bar the Beetle and we've presented that in, in, in the scientific congresses. So the latter question was, have we got any patients in Ireland? Was that the question? I think the question was, w will this be available to people in Ireland? And I, and I don't, my understanding is there isn't anybody, certainly who's treating people with BBS in Ireland for this. I don't know whether there are other exactly. conditions. Exactly. I'll introduce you to my general manager, who probably will answer that question better than me. <laughs> Yeah, so I think um, currently um, we have EC um, approval for um, the once daily and MHRA approval will follow shortly. Um, so we will then be looking at reimbursement, so working with the NHS for future access. So ultimately we will have drug available both in England and in Ireland, but it's a matter of timing um, and we're very much reliant on the health authorities for that. So we are progressing both Ireland and England. Thank you.
I guess the long and short of that is that it will become available to people in Ireland and throughout the EU as well. Yeah. Um, when my son was young, he had a um, test by Dr. Faruqi for MR4I gene, which Ryan had that particular gene as well. Is this more useful? This sem I can't pronounce the word. But is it more useful for people that also have that MR4I gene, or is there a separate medication? Because I'm sure I've heard something about perhaps a, another medication for MR4I. So there are, OK, so that's a good question, and it's, and it's slightly separate. So um, Professor Faruqi looks at um, lots of different genes that are associated with an increased um, chance of, of, of obesity. Um, and she has also worked, I know she's done some studies using different kinds of different kinds of drugs. And exactly which ones are going to be most useful for different kinds of people, I think is still, okay. is still um, not quite clear yet. Do you think it would be um, worth getting back in touch with her? Because that was many years ago before Ryan was even diagnosed with CDS. So was she under, do you know, why don't we have this conversation afterwards? Is that all right? Because it's a specific question. Yeah. yeah. OK. I, my time is up. Can I do one more question? Is that allowed? Yeah. No. Yes? With this uh, <laughs> step nanotide you say is an injection currently, will it become either a tablet form or a liquid form for those people who have a fear of injections, which is not myself? <laughs> OK. <laughs> I, 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 unfortunately, I don't have any insight into uh, exactly what's happening at Rhythm, but my, uh, but, but I have not heard that they are doing anything other than the weekly injections. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, I think Thank that's me. I'm not allowed to ask. Me. So. <laughs> more.